Hello you guys and welcome to my channel. I'm so excited to have you here. So I am very, very excited for today's video. As you guys know, if you have been watching my videos for a little while or have been keeping up on the community tab, I recently told you guys about the college that reached out to me and they asked me to first host an event with them, but because of COVID that didn't end up happening. So instead of flying to the college and doing that event, we decided that I would make a video for them on on the negative impacts of multi-level marketing and job scams for college students and recent graduates. So today's video is going to be that video that I sent over to the college and that they are going to be using in order to educate their college students. So I'm extremely excited for that opportunity to do more work with people like college students. I know when I got roped up into an MLM, I was also a college student. So I definitely understand where college students come from when they end up accidentally joining an MLM. MLM or joining one because of the false promises that are made to them. So with that being said, let's get into it. Here's the video that I sent over to the college and I hope that you guys enjoy. It's about 55 minutes long and maybe you'll learn something new today. So let's get into the video. Hello, my name is Deanna Mims. I'm 24 years old and I'm also a recent graduate earning my bachelor's in psychology. And I am also a commentary creator over on YouTube where I educate and inform about job scams, but most importantly, multi-level marketing companies. I was also recruited into a multi-level marketing company when I was around 19 to 20 years old. And I was also a college student like yourselves. I ended up spending two years in that multi-level marketing company, losing over $5,000. Many multi-level marketing companies, also known as MLMs, tend to focus on taking advantage of very vulnerable groups of people. For example, college students that are seeking real job opportunities and are currently getting their degrees. Many MLMs actually focus on being perceived Received as real jobs with seemingly real interviews, but in the end, you wind up being involved with a company that most people make no money, lose money, or go into debt per the FTC. Other MLMs focus on promoting promises of time freedom and being your own boss, earning free trips and free cars, along with earning financial freedom, which is just another way to real college students in who are seeking those things in their life. So in today's video, I'm going to go through all the different aspects about multi-level marketing from the beginning of what MLMs even are so that hopefully you can identify them when and if someone tries to recruit you to them or if someone tries to present you a fake job opportunity when in all actuality it's just the most of a marketing company. So to start off, what even is an MLM? If you are not familiar with what MLMs are, so multi-level marketing is the practice of selling goods or services on behalf of a company in a system where participants receive commissions on their sales as well as the sales of any participants they recruit. Many people promote multi-level marketing companies as a way to get rich quick. The FTC also states that MLMs are businesses that involve selling products to family and friends and recruiting others to do the same. And some MLMs actually turn out to be a legal period pyramid schemes. So MLMs revolve around selling a product. For example, the company Monate, if you have ever heard of them, sells hair care and skin care or Beachbody, an MLM that actually sells like health and wellness products. But at the same time, they are recruiting others to do the same. They are technically trying to sell a product, but then also trying to recruit people to also sell that product. When you recruit people to actually do that, when you recruit people to join the company with you and to also sell the product, they become a part of what is called your downline. They are your recruits. Having a downline actually allows allows for you to make even more money because you start to earn money off of all the work that your downline and recruits do, which does include weekly bonuses and commissions from the sales your downline produces. During my two years personally of research into most level marketing companies, I have found that 99% of MLMs that I have personally looked into have compensation plans that require recruitment, that you can't just join and make a livable wage off of actually selling the product, but that you will have to recruit a team of people and a downline online in order for you to actually attempt to even make a livable wage. Recruitment ends up actually being the number one way to make money and the only way that you can actually get to the top of these companies versus just selling the actual product. That is why a lot of individuals have problems with multiple marketing companies because they really replicate what pyramid schemes are where, yeah, there's a product, but is the products what people are really focused on or is it recruiting other people so that they could make even more money just off their recruits working? So I wanted to go into what pyramid schemes are 
more because I feel like it's really important to identify multi-level marketing companies and pyramid schemes while also kind of comparing the two to show how similar they are because we've had many MLMs that have either been shut down for being pyramid schemes or have been sued, have had to settle with the FTC or with their state. We've had many that have had to pay millions of dollars in settlements because they were found to act as an illegal pyramid scheme. So I feel like it's really important to talk about that if you are not familiar with pyramid schemes. So as I've already said, MLMs really tend to replicate pyramid schemes more than multi-level marketing companies or reps like to admit. But if we actually take a look at what the FTC states about pyramid schemes is they say pyramid schemes are scams. They look remarkably like legitimate MLM business opportunities and often sell actual products, maybe even ones you've heard of. But if you become a distributor for a pyramid scheme, it can cost you and your recruits, often your friends and family, a lot of time and money that you will not get back. The promoters of a pyramid scheme may try to recruit you with pitches about what what you'll earn. They may even say they can change your life. You can quit your job and even get rich by just selling the company's products. That's a lie. Your income would be based mostly on how many people you recruit, not on how much product you sell. Pyramid schemes are set up to encourage everyone to keep recruiting people to keep a constant stream of new distributors and their money flowing into the business. Often in a pyramid scheme, you'll be encouraged or even required to buy a certain amount of product at regular intervals, even if you've already have more inventory than you can use or sell. Eventually, most distributors find that no matter how hard they work, they can't sell enough inventory or recruit enough people to make money. They also can't keep up with the required fees or the inventory purchases that they need to qualify for reward. And they can't even earn enough money to cover their expenses. In the end, most people run out of money, have to quit, and lose everything they have invested. As we can see, what the FTC states about pyramid schemes relates a lot to what actual MLM companies are doing. So I hope that in today's video about multiple marketing companies and job scams, that you can look back on what pyramid schemes are and compare and contrast really the differences because you will find that there are not many differences in actual pyramid schemes and mold level marketing companies. So why are MLMs harmful? I came up with over eight ways that I truly feel multiple marketing companies are harmful to the everyday individual that gets roped up into one. So the first reason why MLMs are harmful, in my opinion, is because of what the FTC states. The FTC states that most people who join legitimate MLMs make little or no money, some even lose money. They state that in some cases, people believe they joined a legitimate MLM, but it turns out to be a legal pyramid scheme that steals everything they invest and leaves them deeply into debt. Even if individuals join join a legitimate MLM and work hard, most people still make no money or lose money. So as we can see, the FTC states that most people who join MLMs will make no money, even though on social media, when individuals are promoting most of marketing companies, they will promote that you can go on all of these trips. They're gonna promote this luxury lifestyle. They're gonna say that you're gonna get a free car and you're gonna be able to make more money than you're making in your job currently or pay off your student loans or be able to actually quit college is a lot of what they will say. But in all actuality, the FTC and other studies that have been done that I'm going to go over at the end of this video have shown that most people who join MLMs make little or no money. And it doesn't matter how hard you work. It has been proven that no matter how hard you work in an MLM, no matter if you put 40, 50, 60 hours into a multi-level marketing company a week, most people will still not make any money. That is the number one way I find that MLMs are harmful because they're constantly promoting the financial aspect and presenting this facade when in all actuality, most people don't make any money in MLMs. The second reason that I find MLMs are harmful is because they tend to use cult-like tactics like information control and thought control to actually influence how a person feels, thinks, and acts while they are actively in a mode of a marketing company. This causes many people who join MLMs to do and say things that they normally wouldn't do and say. A lot of the times this is kind of referred to as brainwashing. Third reason I find that MLMs are harmful is because of how they isolate you from your friends and family. It is widely known that in MLMs they teach you that if anyone in your friend circle or your family do not show you support by either buying your MLM products or joining your actual downline in your MLM, that you will be encouraged to not speak to those family and friends. I've seen a lot of stories. I've talked to a lot of people. I've read a lot of horror stories actually over on my YouTube channel where people have told me that their friends and their family have kicked them out of their life because they have been encouraged not to speak with anyone that doesn't actually support their MLM by joining them. This often leads a lot of MLM reps to feel isolated and to only have the people within the MLM to really lean on, which ends up making MLM reps stay in MLMs even longer than they probably would have stayed in it before. The fourth reason why I find MLMs harmful is because you will be convinced while you are in your MLM actively trying to sell the products or say you are trying to recruit people, you will be convinced to use your personal stories as a way 
need to recruit people. This can include stories about your own mental health diagnosis, like anxiety or depression, or even your experience with things like your physical health conditions, like IBS. So the MLM will actually ask you to use these stories to promote their products and recruit people with the promise that the MLM can help them also through their hard time. It becomes an extremely manipulative tactic that while you're in your MLM, you don't see as wrong because you're constantly being told to do so. But once you leave, you see how manipulative it really is. The fifth way that I find that MLMs are harmful is because of how they truly prey on vulnerable groups of people. This can include college students, new mothers, military spouses, and even individuals like I already stated with mental health disorders or physical health conditions. These groups of people are generally easier to recruit because they're seeking ways to make money or they have something in their life that they're lacking. For example, military spouses are normally seeking community. So MLMs will tend to promote that. With college students, they'll promote financial freedom. They'll promote the fact that you can pay off student loans or not even have to have student loans because you can do this MLM for life and you can make all of this money with it. Well, we already know that most people can't. So you'll see that a lot of the times in specific modes of marketing companies, depending on what the MLM is, they will really try and prey on that vulnerable group in order to recruit and make money. The sixth reason that I find MLMs are harmful is because of the way you have to pay to play. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that before, but when you have to pay to play, that's pretty much talking about the fact that when you join an MLM, you have to buy what's called a starter kit. Those starter kits can range from $100 to 1000 So when someone is promoting the MLM to you, at the end of their promotion, they're going to tell you, oh, well, in order to get started, you have to buy these products and you have to spend this $100 to $1,000 because it's your business. When it's not your business, you're just signing up with a company to sell their products. But that is how MLMs work. In order to really get started with them, you do have to buy starter kits and you do have to buy products. And even when you're already in your MLM, say you already bought that starter kit, most MLMs also have monthly fees that you have to pay that they actually don't tell you before you join the MLM. Those monthly fees normally include what's called a business fee, which could be between $15 to $20 a month. And then they actually have what is called active fees. Active fees are pretty much fees that MLMs have for you to be able to sell products with them. But those active fees are normally anywhere from $100 to $150. And with those active fees, it's pretty much where you just re-up on products that you already have. Even if you already have more products than you can use, you're still gonna have to stay active every single month and continue to buy products. I know when I left my MLM after being being in it for two years, I had a literal cabinet of products because I had to stay active every month. I had to actively buy products every month, even if I didn't need to use them. So this is definitely something that is constantly happening in multi-level marketing companies is the fact that you're constantly having to buy products and you're constantly having to spend even more money in your MLM. The seventh reason I find multi-level marketing companies are harmful is the way that they gaslight their own reps into believing it's their fault if they're not successful. And what I mean by this is say you're in your MLM, you already know that the statistics show that most people make no money and they lose money. But if you are actively working and you're trying and you're trying your best in your MLM to try and make money, say you don't make any and you tell the person that recruited you like, hey, I'm not making any money. I don't know if I can do this. What ends up happening is the person that recruited you is also known as your upline. Your upline will normally blame you for the reason that you're not successful. They will make you believe that you're the problem and you're the thing that's wrong. You're not working hard enough. You're not putting enough into it. You're not posting enough on on social media, you're not reaching out to enough people, even though statistics and the FTC already says that no matter what you do, no matter how hard you work, most people still won't make money. MLM reps will still tell you that you are the reason that you're not making any money when we know that that's not true. And I've seen it time and time again. A lot of people in MLMs do believe that. They believe that they are the problem. They are hard on themselves. They end up going through a lot of mental and physical strain due to these aspects of multiple marketing companies because they truly make them believe that they're just not doing enough. When most people in MLMs are trying, they are doing enough, the system system is just not made for them to be successful. And the eighth reason I feel MLMs are harmful. Now, I do know that there are more reasons why MLMs are harmful, but I feel like these are like the big eight, the big 
eight reasons that I see most of the time happen in MLMs are these eight. So the eighth reason is that 99.9% of MLM comp plans or MLM structures revolve around recruitment and you cannot get to the top of the company or make a livable wage without recruiting hundreds of people under you. So normally MLMs will try and convince the general public that they're just focusing on product sales and you never have to recruit anybody. You can just sell the product. But whenever you actually get involved with the mold sub marketing company, you're going to quickly realize that recruitment is the way to make that level of wage. It's the only way for you to actually get up in a mold sub marketing company. And I thought I would use a specific MLM as an example. I'm actually going to use the MLM Beachbody as an example. I'm going to show you a graphic right here that you can look at. So this graphic that I'm showing you guys right now is pretty much how you get to higher ranks in an MLM. So like I stated in mold sub marketing companies, the focus is going to really be recruiting people. And and as you recruit people, it starts to look like a pyramid, pyramid of you recruiting people, your recruits recruiting people, and it kind of just flows like a pyramid. So within that, they actually have ranks. So each company will have ranks that you need to try and achieve. So the graph that I'm showing you right now is the rank of diamond. It is one of their leadership ranks, one of the ranks at the tippy top on their comp plan. So as you can see, in order to be a diamond rep in Beachbody and make your way up to this rank, you have to have eight reps under you. And then two of your recruits have to recruit two people. And then on top of that, all of those people actually have to buy products of $50 or more a month. So they even count as active people in your downline. So as you can see, Beachbody reps have a constant need, in my opinion, to recruit people and have them buy products even if the person doesn't need products, just so that they can maintain the rank that they're at. Because for example, if we look at this graph with Beachbody, in order for you to get to that diamond rank, you need to have all of those people under you. If any of those people quit, you lose your rank and you're no longer going to be paid at that rank. You're no longer gonna get the extra bonuses and stuff that you would with that rank. So it shows that in order to get to those higher ranks, in order for MLM reps to get there, they have to recruit. It's not really about, oh, how much product can you sell? It's about how many people can you recruit and how many of your recruits can continue to buy products. And something important to also remember is that in multi-level marketing companies, the higher you get in the ranks, the higher you get in the company and the more people that you recruit, the more money that you're gonna make. If you actually look at any MLM comp plan, it's going to showcase that the higher you get, the more access to bonuses that you have and everything like that. So the people at the bottom of the ranks, the people that are struggling to get to the top are having less opportunities to make money. And then those that are climbing the ranks are more incentivized to continue to climb the ranks and to continue to try and recruit people so that they can make access to more bonuses and make even more money. So all in all, when it comes to the question of why MLMs are harmful, MLMs constantly promote time freedom and financial freedom, while statistics have proven that most people lose money, make no money, and go into debt. They tend to prey on individuals who find themselves in vulnerable situations to include, like I stated, college students and recent graduates, stay-at-home moms. After you've been convinced to join this opportunity, they will utilize cult-like tactics and behavior to keep you in the MLM longer while convincing you to share your most vulnerable life moments in order to sell products and recruit others to do the same. This leads many individuals to isolating themselves from friends and family who don't believe in their MLM because they are told that the people who don't believe in them are just haters who aren't supporting them. Once you find yourself struggling to recruit or struggling to sell product, the top leaders will try and convince you or even gaslight you into believing that you're the one that's not working hard enough and that it's your fault that you're not successful. This again leads individuals into working even longer hours and staying in the MLM even longer because they're told if they just work harder, they can make it too. Even though statistics prove that not everyone can be successful in this business model, most people do not realize that in the end of an MLM, no matter how many years you spend in it, you're ultimately wasting time, money, and relationships until it's it's too late. So how do MLM reps go about recruiting people? I feel this is really important because a lot of the times individuals, especially I know myself when I was in college, I didn't know even what an MLM was. I didn't know how to identify them. I didn't know the way that MLM reps went about recruiting people. So I kind of didn't know what to look out for, which is what I want to help you guys see today. So I feel like there are three common ways that I find MLM reps are trying to recruit people. But ultimately the most common 
common way that I am seeing people recruit individuals is through social media, whether that's posting on Instagram or TikTok or even YouTube. If you're on YouTube, you're going to see a lot of the time someone may have a link for you to join their MLM company. So it's really important to be able to identify these things so that it doesn't happen to you. So a common method that I actually see on social media when it comes to doing posts is what is called the 321 method. So the 321 method is where a random person, for example, myself, I am Deanna. So say I am scrolling on Instagram and I see someone with a public account. Say that person's name is Becky. When I go on Becky's Instagram account, I am going to like three photos, comment on two of them, and follow Becky one time. So that's what's really called like the three, two, one method. I still have this happen to me today. Even when I make commentary content on multi-level marketing companies and job scams, I still get people who are doing the three, two, one method on my own Instagram account or my social media platforms. And because I know this method, I'm able to really see it when it happens. I don't even have to go to the person's page for me to know that they're in an MLM. So if you ever see someone doing that, clearly like liking three of your photos, commenting on a couple of them and following you for the first time ever, I would definitely be a little bit more wary about that individual. Go to their platform, see if they're selling any products or anything like that because they're probably in an MLM. Now, some people, like I know myself, if I see someone's page that I really enjoy and like, someone's Instagram page, I may like some photos and comment on them. So not everyone is gonna be in a multi-level marketing company that likes your photos and comments on them, but really looking out for this three, two, one method if you're just on your social media platform is really important because this is the common method I see used on social media. The next way that I see people trying to recruit, especially college students, is through sites like LinkedIn. So LinkedIn has actually stated in their policies and procedures that MLM reps cannot promote on their platform. But sometimes, you know, LinkedIn does not see that people are promoting on their platform. But in general, people will go on LinkedIn and they will do job listings to try and get you to think that you're looking at a real job opportunity when in all actuality, it's just a multi of a marketing company or a job scam. So when individuals do this, like I stated, they normally post a job listing and they try and pretend that their MLM is a real job when it's not. We know that most people in MLMs make no money, so it's not a job if you're not able to make money from it. A job is where you're either getting an hourly wage or you're in a salaried position. So it's really important that if you are researching jobs on LinkedIn, that you are going to that job posting and then researching the company you are applying for before you actually apply to the company to ensure that it is an actual company and not an MLM. I have actually seen where some MLMs like the MLM Cucko or Vector Marketing, they will actually post on LinkedIn and set you up for an actual interview as if it is an hourly wage job or a salary job to try and recruit you. So what ends up happening is people go on a job interview and they think that they're interviewing for a real job position But in all actuality, they're just getting themselves roped up into an MLM. So I actually decided to go on LinkedIn and find a job listing example that I could just show you all here today. So this one's, in my opinion, a little bit more obvious, but sometimes they aren't. Sometimes they don't put the company names. So not every job listing will be as obvious, I feel, as this one. But I thought that I would just show you an example. So this one states that they are looking for a health and wellness entrepreneur. It says that they are with Team Beachbody. So normally... I know for myself, when I have seen these LinkedIn job postings, a lot of them don't say the company name, which is another red flag. If a job listing on LinkedIn does not actually show a company name, that's definitely a problem. So here it states that it is a part-time job and that they are actively recruiting. It also states that they've already had 30 applicants. So 30 people searching for jobs has already applied to this job posting. When it's not an actual job, it's a multi-level marketing company where you're just an independent contractor. You don't have an hourly wage or a salary. You either get paid by selling a product or you get paid by your recruits. So here it says that training starts virtually on 5-2. It's looking to fill five positions. It states that you will work from home to guide others in creating sustainable lifestyle changes to reach their health goals. You will guide and motivate clients through nutrition, exercise, personal development, and other aspects of wellness. The job listing also states that we will provide tools 
tools and resources for you to deliver virtually that you can combine with your own tools and expertise. You must be a self-starter who is willing to work independently as well as with a team. Your personality should be upbeat, positive, and engaging with a strong desire to empower others through fitness and mindset. You must be comfortable with social media, Zoom, virtual meetings, etc. Willingness to participate in a guided mentorship program is a must and that the individual doing this is Coach Lindsay. So as you can see, this job listing, it looks pretty real. It's like, okay, they're telling you when training starts. They're telling you what they're looking for. It shows that 30 other people have actually applied to this job listing. So it looks like it's a part-time job where they want you to be like a health and wellness entrepreneur where you're going to do things like social media and go on Zoom and have virtual meetings. When in all actuality, this is a multi-level marketing company. It's not a part-time job. It's not a job at all. And this is a reason why LinkedIn has a policy that you cannot, if you are in an MLM, you cannot do a job posting if you're a multi-level marketing rep. But again, this is definitely something to look out for because it happens a lot more than most people would expect. The last place that I actually see recruitment happening or where MLM reps are trying to recruit people is in person at random places like grocery stores or college campuses, even places like coffee shops where I know a lot of college students will go to just do work where they don't have to be in their house. I also see this happen on bulletin boards actually at campuses or on campuses. So if you are at your college, you may see on any of the bulletin boards for the job opportunities, people may place ads for like MLM. So it's important important to be able to tell the difference if it's a real job or if it's an MLM. So a lot of the times in person, when someone comes up to you and they are trying to recruit you into their MLM, they will really try and befriend you and they will start asking you questions like, what do you do? Which is normal questions like an average person would ask you, but this person will more than likely kind of tie in your answers to what they're doing and why you should do what they're doing. So at the end of the conversation, a lot of people in person that are MLM reps will pretty much be like, hey, I have this amazing opportunity. I have this meeting that you can come to or this online meeting. Would you be interested in doing that? If someone does that 99% of the time, it's an MLM. So it's definitely something to look out for. And those are just some examples on how people are recruited. So definitely is very prevalent on social media or places like LinkedIn. So now I wanted to go over common terminology used when people are trying to recruit you into their MLMs. So most MLM reps, especially on social media, when they are promoting their MLM, they tend to hide the fact that they even sell for a multi-level marketing company. And they oftentimes hide the name of the multi-level marketing company. This can cause many individuals to actually get involved with multiple marketing companies without even knowing that they're getting involved with it. Again, I am an example of that. I was in an MLM. I didn't even know what an MLM was. I was just your average college student kind of looking for some community and stuff like that. And I ended up getting into an MLM without even knowing it was an MLM. So here are some buzzwords and that are definitely utilized in MLMs to rope people in. So phrases like choose your hours or be your own boss, retire your spouse, retire your parents. You can earn a free car or free free trip. A lot of the times I'll also use buzzwords like financial freedom, time freedom, business opportunity, or side hustle. A lot of the times they will even say that they are boss babes, which I know is a term that's used by a lot of actual entrepreneurs, but it's definitely overused by MLM reps. And I think it's important for me to state that in a lot of MLMs, they are going to say that they own their own business. That's the big thing about multi-level marketing companies. That is why they use those buzzwords like time freedom, financial freedom, retiring your spouse, business opportunity, those kind of phrases, because in MLMs, they are told that they are business owners. When in all actuality, MLM reps are independent contractors. They are individuals that are used to sell products for a company. They are not a business owner and do not own a business when they join an MLM, but they will be told that they are. So now I wanted to go over common MLMs that target specifically college students or recent graduates, because there are definitely a couple MLMs that I see that mostly target college students over anyone else. So the first MLM that really targets college students is the MLM Cutco, or it's also called Vector Marketing. So Cutco is actually a door-to-door -door sales company that is used to sell kitchen knives. They normally are the largest company or largest group of people that utilize places like LinkedIn to recruit by posting on LinkedIn, putting up fake job postings and job listings where they pretend to be an actual job. This is actually the MLM that will put you on a real interview and try and sell the MLM as if it is a real job when in all actuality, 
it isn't. The second company that I see really trying to recruit college students is what is called Herbalife Shops. So you may have heard of the company Herbalife. You may have seen Herbalife before, but I don't know if you're familiar with what an Herbalife Shop is. So Herbalife Shops are one of the most, in my opinion, sneakiest recruitment hubs possible when it comes to multi level marketing companies. So if you are not familiar with Herbalife, Herbalife is actually a health and wellness company that sells products like protein shakes. So Herbalife Shop is actually where MLM reps make an in-person smoothie shop, just like your everyday like tropical smoothie or whatever smoothie spot you have in your town. That's pretty much what an Herbalife Shop is. So what ends up happening is an MLM rep will open up a shop that looks like it's an actual smoothie shop. They're not going to promote the fact that they sell Herbalife. They're not going to put Herbalife on any of their marketing. They're not going to make the name of their smoothie shop like Herbalife Shop. It's going to be named something completely different. I actually have an Herbalife Shop that is right down the street from me or smoothie place that is right down the street from me that is not called Herbalife Shop. It is just called a different name because they aren't going to make it obvious that they're an MLM. So instead they have to use other ways to market that they are a smoothie shop. So a lot of the times when you go into these Herbalife nutrition shops, they will end up utilizing Herbalife products in the actual smoothies itself. So when you go in to buy a smoothie, your smoothie is going to have the Herbalife protein powder or whatever drink that you're buying. It's going to have all Herbalife products in it. But a lot of the times these shops are actually hubs for these individuals to just sell the community to you. So a lot of the times they will have events and stuff like that at the Herbalife shop to really sell you on the community with the hopes that they can recruit you to work at the store and join the MLM. So while some people just walk into the smoothie shop thinking that they're going to their everyday like a brick and mortar store just to buy a smoothie, they may just be walking into an Herbalife store that tries to recruit them. Now, a couple other MLMs that I'm not going to go in depth about, but that I feel really promote to college students are MLMs like Mary Kay, Beachbody, Monate, Thrive slash Lavelle, Arbonne, and It Works. These are definitely the MLMs that I see college students joining the most, and they are the most prevalent on social media. So the next question that I wanted to go over is what is the differences between real job opportunities and multi-level marketing companies? A lot of the times when MLM reps promote on social media or even MLM companies promote on social media, they will talk about how horrible regular full-time jobs are or part-time job when in all actuality, the MLM is the thing that people are probably not going to make money at. They're going to spend a lot of time and money into something that is most likely not going to reward them while a job getting paid for the work that you're doing and the time that you are putting in when that's not happening in an MLM. So with a real job, like I stated, you do get an hourly wage or a salary while well, in an MLM, you will actually be charged to join them. You will then have to spend even more money. Like I already told you in the beginning of this video, you will have to spend more money on things like websites and paying products monthly in order to be active. A real job will also give you benefits like health insurance, dental insurance, vision. They'll also have things like a PTO program, maternity leave, or a policy for you where you have a certain amount of days off a year while MLMs have zero benefits, none. There's not one benefit in an MLM when it comes to health insurance or PTO or maternity leave, you pretty much have to work 24 seven. I have literally seen MLM reps recruiting people and promoting on social media while they are in active labor. So there are no benefits when it comes to multi-level marketing companies. And then lastly, the real benefit of having a real job is the fact that when you go to your job, that is when you clock in. And when you clock out is when you clock out. You have that personal freedom and that freedom outside of your job to do whatever it is that you want. You can go to your job, clock in, clock out, and then leave. And then all of that time that you are not working, your part-time or full-time job, you have to do whatever you want with it. <laughs> with an MLM, you are constantly working. And MLM really promotes what I like to call hustle culture. They're all about hustling 24 seven. There is never a time where you are clocking in and then clocking out. You are working all hours of the night. It doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing. 
something, a lot of people end up spending all of their extra time working their MLM because that's what they're told that they should be doing. So those are really the biggest differences that I see. The fact that in a real job, you get paid, you have your benefits, you have that freedom outside of your job to do what it is that you want. With MLMs, it's the complete opposite. So continuing on with really talking about real jobs and multi-level marketing companies, a lot of times I am asked the question of what impact does MLMs have on someone's financial and mental well-being? And in my opinion, MLMs have a very, very large impact on someone's financial situation, as I have kind of been stating every now and again in this video. Most college students specifically are still at a moment in time where they are setting themselves up for a career. So most students are not in the most financially stable position. A lot are taking out student loans and really trying to set themselves up for their future. And MLMs love to prey on that. They love to talk about the fact that you can make your own hours and make as much money as you want. The fact that you're going to have uncapped income because clearly that's going to be enticing to a group of people who may not have a full-time job yet or may not be set in their career or financially stable currently. Even though the stats have proven time and time again that 99 percent of people that join MLMs will be put in an even deeper hole than they already are in, MLM reps will still promote the fact that people can have financial freedom if they join the MLM when it's quite the opposite. Now, when it comes to people's mental health, I think that this is a really large aspect in multi-level marketing company. Being in an MLM in general is not only physically and emotionally taxing, but it is mentally taxing. I have seen MLMs lead people down a very hard path mentally, especially due to the financial strain and physical strain and emotional strain that MLMs put upon people. The constant cold messaging, the constant fact that most people aren't making money, the constant trying to recruit people, the constant talk about the fact that you need to work harder because if you don't work hard, you're not going to make money even though most people don't make money. All of that is so taxing on somebody's mental health and I have seen many people struggle mentally because of multiple marketing companies and I've seen many people be negatively impacted not only financially but mentally and emotionally. So now I wanted to touch on the topic of how and why are college students and recent graduates targeted as a whole? So college students and recent graduates are huge targets for multiple marketing companies for multiple reasons. Most college students are taking out student loans or working part-time jobs to support themselves while they're in full-time school. Because of this, MLM reps see that this is a way to really promote the promise of making money because they see that college students are actively struggling in that area. Many students see MLM reps flaunting their money on social media and presenting this facade lifestyle that makes them want to join because they may believe that they can achieve what that person on social media is achieving. Many times MLM reps promise that you can achieve the level of success that they have when we know most people will never get to that point. Now when it comes to recent graduates, recent graduates are targeted a ton due to the fact that they are the group of people who are really looking for that entry level job for the the degree that they just received. This leaves many individuals open to accidentally joining MLMs under the false pretense that it is a real job. Like I talked about with Cutco and LinkedIn, a lot of those recent graduates are the individuals who will get roped in because they are actively seeking entry-level jobs for the degree that they just got. And a lot of recent graduates do find themselves in college debt, especially here in the United States. And because of that, the fact that they are in student loan debt, MLM reps will try and convince them that by joining their MLM, they can pay that debt off. A list of other ways that college students and graduates are targeted is because they are seeking community. Maybe you are going to college out of state and you're not really around your friends and family. You're new to the area. That will be a reason why people will try and recruit you. Say you're looking for more time freedom. Maybe you're spending a lot of time in college and then a lot of time on your part-time job or full-time job if you need it. That will be another reason. And then even just 
the lifestyle that MLM reps promote on social media in general will be a huge reason why a lot of college students and graduates get roped in. A lot of MLM reps like to promote a facade on social media that they're living this luxury lifestyle when a lot of people are in debt and not even breaking even in their MLM. So I feel like those are a lot of reasons why the demographic of college students and graduates can really see themselves getting roped into MLM. So the next topic that I wanted to talk about was how can you respond to either a friend or a family member that is actively trying to recruit you into their multi-level marketing company. Because so far I've talked about MLMs in general. I've talked about, you know, the demographic of college students that they will try and recruit, why they will try and do that, how they will go about doing that. But I haven't talked about how can you respond to someone that is asking you to join and you don't want to join the MLM. So if a family member or friend approaches you and asks you to join their MLM, it's important to, yes, support your friend, support your family member, verbally, but to not feel as if you have to join their MLM because they're asking you and to really stand your ground as a person. So if you are someone who really struggles with that and struggles saying no to your friends and family, I'm kind of going to give you what you could possibly say to yes, support your friend, but to also tell them that you don't want to join because I again have seen many people join MLMs just because they felt bad for saying no. So instead of saying yes to something that you may not want to do, instead you can say something along the lines of, hey friend, thank you so much for thinking of me for this opportunity and while I do support you 100% as my friend or my family member, I am just not interested in joining a multi marketing company and I will never be interested in that, but I still 100% support you as a friend. And that is how how I tell people that they can respond. I get a lot of questions of how can I respond to my friend? You know, they're asking me to join or how can I tell my sorority friend that I don't want to join their MLM? I don't want to be casted out. That could just be a way to say it. Or you could just tell them the truth. Hey, I support you as a friend, but I do not have the financial standing to do that. Or I don't have the mental capacity to do that. But again, I do think it's important to yes, support your friend, but to also not put yourself in a potentially bad situation for like your finances and your mental health and everything like that because you want to support them. So with that, a lot of times you will get friends and family who will ask you, well, you don't have to actually join and spend money and you don't have to join and be recruited, but can you just join to get a discount on the products? It'll really help me out. So the question is, is joining an MLM just to get the discount actually worth it. So many MLM reps will try and convince you to join the MLM by saying you can get a discount on the products. In my opinion, the discount on the products for an MLM is 100% not worth it. MLM products tend to be at a really marked up price. So the discount that you're getting from being a rep, like say you signed up as a rep just for the discount, that discount that you're getting, you can already go and buy that same product somewhere else for cheaper. For example, if we actually look at the MLM Beachbody, since I've been talking about Beachbody a couple times today, I thought we just hit on them. But if you go to Beachbody's website, just to get their post-workout, to get a 20-day supply, it is $70, $70. And even with the discount, it's not that much cheaper. You can go to Target or you can go online and get protein powders for way cheaper than that. So in the end, the discount is not really worth it. And even on top of the discount not being worth it for the product itself, because they're already at a very marked up price, when you join as an MLM rep, even if you're just doing it for the product, you still have the same requirements as everybody else. You still have to pay that monthly business fee. For example, for Beachbody, even if you join as a rep, just because you want to get a discount on the products, you still have to spend $15.95 every month for the fee that reps have to spend every month. So in general, it's really not worth it when you could just go buy a product at Target or go buy a protein powder for $20, $30. Another reason why I truly believe that just joining for the product discount isn't worth it is because a lot of times when individuals join an MLM and they just buy the product, they will still every single month continue to be hounded by the MLM reps to actually work the MLM 
as a rep, actually sell the products themselves and recruit. So I have personally seen a lot when it comes to Beachbody that people will sign up for the discount, but then they will continuously be told, hey, you're good at this. You're really good at working out. You're really always buying products. Why don't you just recruit people? Why don't you just start selling the products so you can make some of that money back? So you run the risk of really being hounded every single month by current MLM reps if you just join to buy the product. So another common question that I get is how do MLMs target other vulnerable groups of people? Or what are the other groups of people that MLMs will target besides college students and recent graduates? So as I've already stated many times is MLM reps in general target people that are in a vulnerable position, whether that is trying to recruit a new mom to a fitness MLM so she can get her pre-baby body back, which is wrong in general. That is very wrong and should not be happening, but it definitely does happen because new moms are in a very vulnerable position. And then we also have MLMs promoting community a lot to people like military spouses that may be struggling. Maybe they're in a state or a country where they don't know anybody and maybe their spouse is overseas. Maybe they have children that they're taking care of on their own. A lot of MLMs will promote that community aspect to military spouses to try and recruit them. I have also seen more recently MLMs that are coming up that are mental health MLMs, where they are promoting the fact that they can help cure your mental health disorders. We also see the opposite happening, where we see people with physical health conditions like IBS or cancer. And unfortunately, we see MLMs trying to promote to those individuals to try and recruit them. And all of those people that I just mentioned are very, very vulnerable groups of people. So every MLM, time and time again, has proven to me that they will constantly seek out those that are vulnerable. And it's very uncommon to see someone get recruited into an MLM that has like a picture perfect life with perfect circumstances, like a perfect community with no financial hardships, no mental health issues, no physical health conditions. Normally, you don't really see that happening. You see people joining an MLM because of things like community. Maybe they're struggling financially. Maybe they're struggling to find a job. There's something that is normally missing or something that is happening to an individual that an MLM really hones in on in order to recruit that person. Most MLMs, when you do dig into them, have a very specific group, very specific vulnerable group that they target. With that, let's say that you do get involved in a multi-level marketing company. Say you are one of those vulnerable groups of people and you do end up in an MLM. I kind of want to show you what the day in the life of an MLM rep looks like. And this is on top of what you're currently doing. So if you are a college student, you're currently going to class for a set amount of hours, maybe you have a part-time or full-time job. This is kind of what an MLM would look like if you were to actually join it. And I feel like this is really important to touch on because most of the time individuals and MLMs when they are promoting their MLM on social media or in person at your college campus or on LinkedIn or when you go to an interview thinking that it's a real job interview but it's not, they will tell you that you only need to spend one to two hours on the MLM a day to see success. Unfortunately, that's not the reality at all. That is not the reality. If you talk to anybody who got to the top of an MLM, they spent countless hours trying to get there. And most people still do not get there. So because I've been talking about Beachbody this whole time, I'm just going to keep on the trend talking about that MLM. So Beachbody has a really great example of kind of what the day in the life of a Beachbody rep would look like because they have what is called a success club system. It is called their daily business activity tracker. And the daily business activity tracker is kind of the tracker they want their reps to use and kind of like a checklist that you should be doing every single day. Like this is what you should do every day to see success in Beachbody. And it's very similar with other MLMs. That's why I'm just going over one of them because most of them are pretty much the same. So Beachbody is a health and wellness MLM. So this will kind of be geared towards that, but it's very similar for all MLMs. So again, a day in the life is going to be besides your full-time, you know, college or full-time job. This is what you're going to have to do on top of that every day. So you're going to have to, for this MLM, you have to work out, which workouts can be anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour long. You're then going to have to do what's called the connect, initiate, and follow up that takes an hour and 40 minutes. That's their estimated amount of time they say it takes. So first you're gonna have to initiate connections and add new followers on social media by following a bunch of random people. You're gonna have to do a social media post that showcases the benefits of your healthy lifestyle to try and recruit people. You're then going to have to update your Instagram stories throughout the day, doing at least three minutes to each post. So they gave examples of the fact that you can post your daily life, your workout, 
about clips, product use, but they don't want you to show the name brand, which I kind of touched on that a lot of MLMs won't tell you the name of the MLM that they're in or even show product names because the MLM tells them not to. They then want you to post about your healthy meal or meal prep, and then they want you to invite people to join. The next thing they want you to do for 25 minutes a day is respond to all new likes, comments, and views. That means that after you post on social media, you then have to go back to your Instagram post or Facebook post or whatever post you're doing, and you have to message every single person that liked your photo, commented on it, or viewed it. Then for another 15 minutes, you actually need to cold message people and ask them to join you, like ask them if they wanna join the MLM or buy the product. Then for another 15 minutes, you have to go back and follow up with people that you've already invited, but they told you no. Then next for 30 minutes, you have to actively talk to your current customers or clients. You have to respond to questions from all of your customers and your downline, so the people that you have recruited. And then for another 15 minutes, you have to engage and personal development. So that's like reading a book or watching a motivational video. So again, this is what a day in the life looks like. This also does not count the three to four one hour team calls that you will be told that you need to be on. And those team calls are normally where uplines, like the top people that are in the MLM, the people that are making, you know, the actual livable wage and stuff, that will be when those people are training you on what to do in the MLM. So normally there's about three to four one hour calls a week on top of that daily to-do list. So these are the average things that you will be doing in a day if you are an MLM rep on top of your job and on top of college. I feel like even looking back for me, it's wild to look back at the things that I was doing and how much time that I was putting into the MLM. And I know a lot of other people are actively putting in that much time and it's a lot. So that is hours of work that you are going to be trying to do just to attempt to make money. Even when the FTC states that most people still don't make money in an MLM. With all of that being said, I wanted to go over research. I wanted to talk about how can you as a college student or a recent graduate research multi-level marketing companies on your own and where can you go to find information or find out if the opportunity that you are hearing about is an MLM and is not a real job. So I have about four different places that you can go to really do this research to either see if it is an MLM, if you're not really sure if the company is an MLM or where where you can go just to find general statistics and information on multi-level marketing companies. So first, if you want to figure out if an MLM is an MLM, say your friend is promoting a company to you and she's telling you that you should join it, there's actually a really great site out there to help you find out if a company is an MLM or if it isn't. So you can actually go to the site is it in MLM.com, which is a very easy site to remember. So here you can actually type in the name. So let's say we type in Beachbody and then you will see is Beachbody an MLM? And then it tells you, yes, yes, it is an MLM. So this is a place to find out if a company, if you know the company name is an MLM or if it isn't. Now, something to actually keep in mind and remember is that this website is it an MLM.com may not be updated with the newer MLM. So say an MLM was just made, like an MLM company just came out, it just launched in 2022. It may take a while for that website to add it on. So you can also type into Google is blank an MLM. So if you wanted to know is Beachbody an MLM, you could literally go on Google and type in is Beachbody an MLM and information would pop up telling you that it is. So just in case the website is this an MLM.com does not have it in the their database, you can always just Google, is it an MLM with the company name? The next place that you can go to get information is the FTC's website. So the Federal Trade Commission's website. I would really recommend this as your first place to go when you want to seek out information directly about MLM. So the FTC actually has a great resource page that is my favorite page to look at, is the page that I show everybody. I show in a bunch of my YouTube videos. It's called the Multi-Level Marketing Businesses and Pyramid Schemes. On this resource page, they actually explain in detail about MLMs and pyramid schemes. So they express the fact that most people don't make money in MLMs. And if they don't make money, they probably lose money or go into debt. They also talk about the fact that most people who work hard in MLMs make no money or lose money. So I really feel like the FTC's website in general is a really good resource because they also have other links on their website about MLM. But I would really recommend in general becoming familiar with this page, like going over it, reading it. It'll be really eye-opening. I know it was eye-opening for me when I first 
first read this, it really taught me more about MLMs and pyramid schemes and is a really good resource page for anyone that wants to know more on MLM. The next thing that I really recommend individuals to look at is what is called income disclosure statements. So this is another source that is extremely helpful. So these statements are actually yearly statements provided by the MLM company that shows how many people are in each rank and how many people in those ranks are making money and the amount of money that people in those rank are making on average. So these income disclosure statements are really eye-opening because we'll see MLM reps promoting on social media that you can have financial freedom, you can make millions of dollars, you can make more than you're making in your full-time job, but then you can actually Google, for example, you can Google Beachbody income disclosure statement and you can actually see what the average MLM reps are making in that MLM. And just to let you know, for Beachbody, the average an MLM rep makes a year is $3,000. And actually 75% of those people make under $500 a year. And to be exact, it's $491. So income disclosure statements are where it is that you should look because again, it shows the actual average that someone is making from their MLM. The next two resources that I really recommend is the studies that I have been able to find on MLMs. It would be the AARP study that I believe was done in 2017 and then the John M. Taylor study. These are two really great resources and references that you can use on the studies within MLMs. So the first study is the John M. Taylor study where he actually studied over 30 MLMs to see how much money people are making or how much are they losing. In the end, John M. Taylor actually found out that 99.6% of people in MLMs lose money after subtracting expenses. So that was also another very eye-opening study that was done. More recently, the second study that we found is the AARP study, where the AARP Foundation has actually released new information where they explored mindset expectations and experiences of MLM rep participants. This study actually showcased that 74% of people that joined MLMs reported that they either lost money or made no money in their MLM. Of that leftover 26%, 7% of MLM reps stated that they made over $10,000, while 3% made between ten dollars to $25,000 and less than 1% of people in the AARP study made 100000 I feel like these studies are really important because it does showcase how many people are making money or not making money in MLMs. And as you can see, the trend of all of this is that many people are not making money in multi-level marketing companies, even though reps and companies are promoting that they are. So all in all, when it comes to these MLM scams or multi-level marketing scam or just everyday job scams, it's really important to do as much research as you can on that company before either joining it or even going on an interview. In my opinion, MLM scam resources are more accessible now than they have ever been before. So if anyone pitches a company to you, whether that's in person or on social media or through LinkedIn, make sure to ask questions and research that specific company because it may just be another MLM. And in conclusion, I hope that today's video allowed for you to get an insight look into multi-level marketing scams and how to avoid them when you are actively job hunting or when you are actively seeking your current college degree. I also have a lot of other resources on my YouTube channel if you did want to go over and look at that. I have a ton of videos on that if you want more information than what was presented today. So I just want to thank you so much for allowing me to speak with you all today. I hope that you have an amazing day and I hope that this video really helps you in your job hunt or when it comes to actively seeking your college degree. An MLM is also called network marketing. It's a very controversial marketing strategy. Stra strategy. What the? F the seventh reason that I find MLMs harmful is because of the fact, no, I feel like there are really three most common, no, company you are applying for before you actually imply, imply. It states that you will work from home to guide others in creating substantial, sustain, sust oh my God, sustainable lifestyle changes. Now a couple of, uh, uh, the last, okay.